Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions, and in this video, I'm going to try and explain how linear skin weights work. Now, what are linear skin weights? Well, it's essentially how you skin a character. Everything, every single piece of software is using linear skin weights, and they're all exactly the same. So I'm in 3ds Max right now, but I could be in C4D, Maya, Blender, I could be in any game engine, and it'll be using linear skin weights as its base way of setting up skins for a character. Now, there's lots of issues with linear skin weights that we need to try and get around. There are methods and ways that that work and things that we can do to the mesh stuff we can add. This isn't a video on that. This is on just how linear skin weights actually are calculated. So what I have is this very, very, very simple model, obviously. It has very few um, you know, rows of vertices in it just to make sure that it illustrates the problem very clearly. Um, and I've done some very simple skinning on it. For instance, each row of vertices around each joint are weighted 50-50 between their two neighboring bones. So for in instance, this row of vertices is weighted 50% to the upper arm, 50% to the lower arm. So is the one around the wrist. The ones in the hand are weighted 100% down to the hand bone, and the ones up here uh, that are around the clavicle are weighted 100% up around the clavicle. So now when I scrub the timeline, you can watch the wrist and you can see that it starts to collapse as it goes down. As it goes up, same thing. And then I've got a twisting action happening that really sells the problem. And you can see what's happening. It is completely butterflying and disintegrating the wrist completely. You might say, well, how do you fix that? You don't. There's simply no way of fixing it with directly with linear skin weights and nothing else in your rig, okay? So there's gotta be more rigging on top of either the, the rig itself and that's controlling skin or things that are helping to control the mesh itself from collapsing like that. So when we look at the elbow, we see the same problem. So as the elbow bends, you can see the, it, the elbow starts collapsing in and then the inside of the elbow also collapses in. And in fact, if you look at your own elbow, it almost works the exact opposite way because there's a bone that protrudes out and pushes your elbow out. When your arm's dead straight, you can't really see the bump of your elbow. Once it's bent, you can see a large bumpy protrusion sticking out at the elbow. So what's going on here? Let's just take a look at skin itself. So if I pick a vertex here and bring up the weight tool, you'll see that that vertex is weighted between the upper arm and the, the forearm 50-50. And so is the entire row here. And so what's happening is it's weighting it in a linear fashion. Well, what on earth does that mean? I'm just gonna turn on this new layer and this new layer is gonna add some point helpers in here. I'll just get out of the skin modifier for now. And what you'll see is three points at each vertex that I'm gonna try and explain. So there is a blue one and that is parented up the chain. Okay, so it's parented up to the uh, um, upper arm. There is the red one, and that's parented down to the forearm in this case. Same at this, uh, you know, the inside of the elbow, and same at the wrist. When skin is initiated, it's initiated at frame zero in this case. And what it does is it grabs all of the vertices in the mesh and compares it to all of the bones that each vertex is being weighted to. And it calculates an offset transfer matrix from the bones that are affecting it. So, okay, what does that mean? Well, this is gonna represent our vertex, this point helper, this green one. And so when it got initialized in skin, we'll pretend it's in skin essentially, it went and grabbed this bone and this bone, so the uh, upper arm and the forearm, and it created new two offset transforms. So this blue um, point helper, because it's parented up to the upper arm, it's kind of holding and calculating an offset transform. So same thing with the red, it's parented up to the forearm and it's holding that offset transform. So that when I scrub and I scrub to the uh, time that the elbow bends, you can see that the red is going with the forearm, the blue is staying with the upper arm. Now, the green is just position constrained between the two, the same way that vertex is actually been uh, weighted. And in this case, 
it's being weighted 50-50 between those two points. So what happens now is when I scrub the timeline, you can see that that point is staying exactly where that vertex on the elbow is. And you can see why the linear skin weights are causing it to collapse. So once it's bent all the way, those are the two points that it's constrained between. And it's a linear weighting between the two. And you can see that it's 50-50 right in between. Now, I've just drawn a line between these two to illustrate that it's a straight line. But if we weighted it one way or the other, we would get the other solutions. And that vertex in the mesh would be moving back and forth if we were doing that with skin. You can see what's happening one on the interior here and why it collapses exactly the same reason. Eventually, the two points end up either side of the arm and the vertex ends up having to be in between the two, collapsing that inside joint. If we take a look at the wrist, we can really see the problem come in when it twists around and turns the palm up. And you can see exactly why that's happening now. Two points are now completely opposing each other either side. The red has been parented to the hand bone, and so it's rotated around 180 degrees. The green point is doing exactly what we've told it to do and be 50-50 weighted between these two joints. And there you go, there's the collapsing that we're gonna see if we don't actually try and do something about it with further modeling techniques, skinning techniques, and possibly mesh deformation techniques. But hopefully that explains a little bit about how linear skin weights are actually calculated in video games, feature films, and everything else in between.